Okay, I am back. It's been a while. Kind of got out of my uh, YouTube channel there. Kind of hard to think of topics I want to do sometimes, and sometimes it also gets a little depressing realizing nobody really watches my videos, probably. <laughs> so, like, oh, who am I talking to? <laughs> but I'm trying not to think about that too much because I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I sort of want to do. Is I notice a lot of my videos are really long because I'll just start rambling. and So I don't know. I, I'm thinking of trying to keep them to 10 minutes. And I know whenever I watch somebody else's YouTube, 10 minutes seems like a long time. Plenty long, you know. But yeah, when I'm making one, dang, I don't see how I'm going to keep it to only 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, 10 minutes. Maybe 20 minutes at least. Maybe I'll just start out with trying to make only at least, depending on the video. But maybe I'll try to limit myself to 20 minutes at least. I said 10 if I'm watching a 10 minute video it seems long but if I'm making one it seems very short like already a minute has gone by <laughs> anyways I wanted to make it you know and, and again a lot of times it's just I make videos if there's something I really want to make a video about and sometimes there's not really or I'm struggling for something to talk about you know it's kind of borderline a lot of times well I could make a video about that but do I really want to other times it's like man I want to make a video about that you know those are the easy ones but here's a topic I have been kind of wanting to talk about for a while. And that is this guy named Jim Quisition or Jim Sterling in the video games area. And uh, I don't know much about this guy. I don't watch his videos. I don't have a history of watching his videos, you know. I'm mostly hanging around the NeoGAF lurking. I don't post there, but the NeoGAF which, as anybody knows this channel knows, NeoGAF disgusts me. And I'm glad Reset Era has kind of taken over. But Reset Era is a lot of the same posters as NeoGAF. And even though the administration is probably not as bad as NeoGAF, it's still a lot of the same Sony-biased, you know, elitist, hypocrite posters. And, uh... But anyways, at these forums, you'll see a lot of Jim Sterling posted. Like, this, in his other name, I guess, is Jim Quisition. And, uh, you know, he's taken by a lot of people, I guess, some sort of elder statesman who's commenting on the industry and, you know, what he thinks matters, which, and like I said, I can't comment out of a great deal of knowledge because I don't watch this guy's videos. I don't care. I'm not interested in his bullshit, you know. Uh, but he seems like the king of this anti-microtransaction crowd in a lot of ways, which... I have very conflicted or, you know, my feeling about the whole thing is <sighs> people get so worked up over video game microtransactions. My thing is always, why don't you put that energy into something that fucking matters? <laughs> you know, there's people that get so, there's internet hate mobs that form over this stuff. And it's like... You know, the government is taking away all your rights and they're taxing 90% of your money and they're, you know, destroying your health care and this and that. And, and you don't care about any of that stuff. You're worried about, oh my God, this video game I play is asking me to pay 99 cents for something that I don't think I should have to pay 99 cents for. Oh my gosh, I got to get in a rage about that. And, you know, it just always struck me as that's the fundamental hypocrisy of it all. You know, you think the most important thing in life is that, first of all, even if a video game was the shittiest, most greedy, most microtransaction-laden thing in the world, who cares? It's a video game. You know, there's layers of this stuff. And it's never important what a video game does. Doesn't matter, yeah, but it's a video game. And I don't want to hear whatever bullshit excuses people are going to come up with. But a particular demographic, which, let's be honest, what it is, is it's young males. It's... It's the video game demographic, and I don't care how unpolitically correct it is to say that's who it is. It's, it's young males, you know, probably age of 15 to 25 generally, maybe 15 to 30. And they're kind of aggressive at that age anyways, you know. And these, uh, you know, that's Jim Quisition's audience. I don't care how politically incorrect it is to say, but he's, he's not talking to a bunch of women, you know. He's not, or old people. And I get it, but... uh. You know, I just, it disgusts me how the internet gets so worked up over video game microtransactions. Like, that's the biggest threat facing the world. 
Now, is it a good thing or a bad thing? You know, I, I agree that sometimes video game microtransactions are a bad thing, etc., etc. It's all just a matter of, you know, there's, there's kids starving in Africa, you know, and you're worried about fucking microtransactions. Like, go screw yourself, you know. Jim Sterling, go screw yourself. Why don't you help some kids in Africa or something instead of making yourself rich, pandering. That's what, that's what Jim Sterling at the end of the day does, and that's my problem with me panders. This is what he does. There's a mob out there, okay? That mob is like teenage males who don't like microtransactions in video games. And they're, they have a lot of testosterone. They're very angry about this, you know? And video games are a big part of their life. And and what Jim Sterling does is he panders to that mob. You know, that's what he does. This huge, angry mob. And he's going to tell that mob what they want to hear. And he's going to make himself rich off that mob. Okay, you know, <laughs> he may even have some good points at times, whatever. But let's not have any illusions about what Jim Sterling does. He panders to a mob, you know. <clears throat> That's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but, you know, it just, am I the only one who can see the hypocrisy here, you know? And look at this guy. Here's one thing I want to point out. He has 6,501 page. He makes $13,000 a month just off of Patreon. Who knows how much he makes off of sponsorships, uh, YouTube views, you know, uh, thirteen thousand a month is what is it? One hundred and thirty. It's about one hundred and fifty grand a year just off his Patreon. Just off his Patreon. Stop and think about that. <laughs> and you know, who knows how much he's making off of YouTube? And you know, uh, who knows? He's probably got a blog, and he's probably got podcasts, and he's probably got this and that. He's also making money off of. You know, what is he pulling down? 500 grand a year, you know, possibly. At least I would assume 250. You know, if he's pulling in 150 just from his Patreon. So the point is, this guy's rich. This guy's don't don't ever forget that because this guy will sit there and try to bash companies to hell and high water over making money. And what this guy does is make money, and that's what he's here for. He's here to be greedy and he's here to make money. Don't ever forget that. And what he's here to do is pander to you and tell you what you want to hear and bitch about microtransactions and that's his niche and he makes money off of it. But the hypocrisy is he's bashing these companies for doing what? Making money. <laughs> but he is making a lot of money. Look at this. This is just his Patreon, remember. This doesn't account for any of his YouTube ad money and whatever other sponsorships, a guy as big as him... Is probably pulling a lot of other money besides this. So let's not forget what his modus operandi is. You know, he is going to criticize these companies for wanting to make money. And he's going to turn around and stick his hand out and take your money. You know, it's two sides of the same coin. And a guy like this who panders to the mob, let me tell you, he's not, he knows everything he says is something that the mob's going to approve. He's not ever going to sit there and go against the mob. That, that's my problem with these guys like this. Okay, I respect the guy who, who will go against the mob. Almost no YouTube creators will. They're all scared to death of the mob. And I'm sure he doesn't either. I haven't watched all his videos. But he's not going to tell you anything that's an unpopular opinion, you know. He's going to tell you... Whatever the mob wants. And that's my problem with these guys. <clears throat> well, you know, and it, it's a two pronged problem. The other problem being that if you, you know, stop and think about how irrelevant a freaking micro, microtransaction in a video game is. Because an entire video game is irrelevant. Because an entire, you know, video games don't matter at all in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, you'll probably have somebody, oh, yes, they do, oh, or it's the principle. No, no, it's not, you know. You'll probably have somebody say, well, if we let the corporations get away with this here, well, you're letting the government get away with murder, and you don't care about that, you know. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of anti-capitalism in it, too. That's another thing I hate, is that a lot of America is sort of like anti-capitalist, even though we're supposedly this capitalist country. And that kind of bugs me, too, but... <laughs> Uh, you know, and we're trained in America to hate corporations first and, and to look the other way at what the government is doing, you know, 
which is here's another thing that nobody wants to admit is that the government is much 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 bigger than any corporation like the the largest corporation i don't even know who that'd be but probably apple in terms of market cap and i don't know who it'd be in terms of employees i think it's actually the postal service which actually is kind of the government probably walmart in terms of employees the federal government is a thousand times i guarantee you bigger than those than apple and walmart put together it's a thousand times bigger guaranteed you know you're talking about the government is like a company with trillions of dollars of budget literally you know <laughs> so it's important to keep things in perspective and realize that corporations are small fries the government is the big fry you know and uh, but you know we can get into this big top level you know politics stuff all we want but <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, so that's my problem with Jim, Jim Sterling. You know, I, I don't have specifics to bash him on, and I'm sure all his defenders would say to me, you know, oh, so you don't know what you're talking about. You're just bashing my off. No, you know, I always reject that our, our argument is so stupid, you know, that people say, like, oh, if you haven't seen the movie, how can you criticize? Or whatever. It's, it's a bullshit, lazy argument. But anyways, yeah, uh, you know, my problem with Sterling is, like I said, he's a mob panderer. That's my problem with him. He's spineless. He's not going to tell the mob anything they don't want to hear. He's going to bitch about microtransactions, and he makes himself rich. He's going to rail against these companies for wanting to make money, and then he's making money hand over fist. You know, uh, you know. I, I just think people shouldn't forget that what he's about. You know, you're lining his. Po he's about lining his pockets, just like these companies are about lining their pockets. So how does he have standing to criticize them all the time? And I get it. Microtransactions are not always a good thing, and, and it's good for them to be policed. I just understand that like the outrage over microtransactions is so much larger than the problem. I'd even go so far as to say the outrage over microtransactions is worse than microtransactions. Like there's a few areas of life this has been the case for a long time, like where the the complaining about it is much worse than the problem. Like, if you asked me, can, would you rather get rid of this problem or would you rather get rid of complaining about this problem? Which one would make your life better? I'd say, no question, get rid of the complaining about it. Because that's what annoys me is having to constantly hear people fucking bitch about Microtransactions don't affect me that much. And I play Destiny 2. I play Destiny. And that's the most overrated thing. You know, I play Destiny 2 and I've never bought a microtransaction in Destiny 2. I don't give a fuck. And I play that thing for hundreds of hours. You don't need to buy a microtransaction ever in that game. Nothing you want in that game is tied to microtransactions. Nothing I want, anyway. <clears throat> and Jim Quisition will lie to you, and he'll tell you the exact opposite. He'll tell you Destiny's nothing but microtransactions, and that you have to buy it. Like I said, I've played that game hundreds of hours, and Destiny 1, I played 2,500 plus hours. I never bought a microtransaction or felt like I had to. I believe I bought a couple just for shits and giggles in Destiny 1, ironically, which was supposedly less microtransaction-laden. And I honestly almost did it to support Bungie. Not that I support Bungie, but I felt like I played this game thousands of hours in between DLCs, and, and they haven't gotten a dime. So you know, maybe I'll pitch a little their way. You know, I've gotten way more than my values worth out of this game. And fuckheads like Jim Sterling want to tell you that Destiny is the worst game ever. That robs you. You know, I paid counting the expansions, maybe a hundred or whatever for Destiny One, and I paid that game for two thousand five hundred hours. What's what's the and I love loved most of it, you know, almost every minute of those hours. So what the fuck I got my value a thousand times over at Destiny? And Jim Sterling, because he's a pander and because the mob hates Destiny, he's going to hate Destiny too. And, you know, he's going to do whatever the mob does. So if there's a strong mob out on the internet that hates Destiny. So, you know, let's ask the question, what's Jim Sterling's take on Destiny? Oh, he hates Destiny? <gasps> Shock, you know. I'm going to clutch my pearls. I never would have expected Jim Sterling to agree with everybody else. You know, give me a fucking break. And to jump on whatever bandwagon of internet hate is going on right now, which has always been since Destiny was created, it's gotten a lot of hate. So, yes. Uh, yeah, about Destiny, like, there's nothing in there I want to buy my... Now, if I cared about cosmetics, here's the thing that's weird about me. I don't care about cosmetics at all in Destiny 2. You know, I think my... Guardian looks great no matter what, and I, you know, he can just have the basic armor and no shader, and I'm like, that dude looks awesome, you know, I, I, I guess I'm wired differently than a lot of people, 
a lot of people are really into these armor sets and stuff. So maybe it's a little different for them. But for me, there is nothing in Destiny 2 that I give a shit about buying a microtransaction for. Nothing. You buy Ingrams, they give you nothing but worthless cosmetics. And I don't give a fuck about them. And I've never paid for one. I, I wouldn't even mind paying for one, you know. <laughs> There's nothing. And, and another thing is, if you play the game a lot, you get Bright Dust out your ass anyway. I'm usually, I didn't even know Bright Dust was a thing until I had played for like three months. And I'm like, oh, I got all this Bright Dust. Oh, this is the microtransaction crazy. Like, I didn't even know. That's how little the microtransactions matter. And I didn't know that when you dismantle certain things and stuff, you get bright dust for them, which is the microtransaction cards. You can go to the Eververse store in Destiny and buy shit with it. And those are all free. You know, you get the shit, like, you get bright engines every time you level up. And stuff. I don't even know because I don't care about that stuff. But you get stuff out of those bright engines that if you dismantle it because you don't want it, which I just naturally did with most of it, you get bright dust. So you end up with a lot of bright dust free, basically, which is basically what the currency is, I believe. And I just recently bought a ghost shell from Eververse for 2500 Bright Dust, and I had that much just because, you know. The point is Destiny just showers you with loot. It showers you with Bright Dust. There's no reason, I, you know, there's nothing that matters in the microtransactions. And Jim Sterling is going to tell you the exact opposite. He's going to lie to you, and he's going to say, oh, the microtransactions are ruining dust. Now. It's entirely reasonable to say that the backlash against the microtransactions, that Bungie would try to get away with more if there wasn't this backlash. And that's probably true, okay. But the backlash is still all out of whack with the reality of the situation, you know. You know, uh, there's millions of people bitching about the microtransactions in Destiny that should care about something else in their life and something else in the world to make it better, you know. That doesn't mean the microtransactions in Destiny are all good, you know. That's my point there. But anyway, so Jim Sterling's a liar. He lines his palms, and he joins whatever mob is popular. You know, if Destiny was super popular and everybody loved it, I wonder what Jim Sterling would think about that. Oh, let me start my chin here. Oh, Jim Sterling's opinion be on Destiny if the mob loved it. I, you know, that's a hard question. Oh, wait. <laughs> He'd go along with whatever the fuck the mob thinks, because that's what he is. He's a mob panderer. He's a crowd pander. You know, he's a masses butt kisser. And, uh, so, yeah, you know, uh, uh, well, I, was gonna, I was talking about Destiny. Oh, 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 I wanted to top it off here. My video is approaching 20 minutes. I'm going to try to stick to my word. One thing that really pushed me over the edge was he put in his top 10 worst games of the year Destiny 2. Now, I have a lot of problems with Destiny 2. Coming from Destiny 1, it's a lot inferior in a lot of respects. But I've been playing the game, again, lately, lightly, and stuff. And there's no way... This is still a great... I mean, you look at this game, the graphics are incredible. The gunplay is incredible. Just like... It may even be... The gunplay is probably not as good as Destiny 1, but it's still incredible. The amount of craftsmanship that went into the visuals, the graphics, the environments is unbelievable. There's so much stuff to do, you know. There's a lot of problems with the game, sure, but this it's still an amazing game. That's the funny thing. After all the dust settles and all the hate against Destiny 2, and a lot of it justified, you know, you think it's the devil, but you, you, if you actually were to sit down and play it, it's fun. You know, I hate to tell anybody this, but it's fun. And, and it, you know, it's not the devil. <laughs> I mean, well, Bungie, there seem to be a lot of evil people on Bungie's staff, but, you know... Uh, it's fun, it's good, you know, amazing, like, people have built up so much hate against Destiny, and it's lies, you know, go play the game, guess what, it's fun, it's deep, it looks amazing, the gunplay is astonishingly good, the loot system could use a lot of work, but it's great, you know, <laughs> it's fucking great, and this idiot put it in the top 10 lit worst games of the year, and again, of you know, that just, to me, he's a joke after that. This is like somebody believing in climate change, talking about scientific matters. If you believe in climate change, you don't have any standing to ever talk about science again. You know, and, you know, that's all I have to say about it. Like, there's no way Destiny 2 is up there with whatever other garbage you put in his 10 game, worst games of the year. You know, it's an amazing game. It's got so much to do. It looks so good, you know. 
Is there a lot of problems with it? Sure, and nobody's been more vocal about them than me. But come on. Ten worst games of the year. You're a joke, Jim Sterling. You're a joke.